So I've made a lot of videos about treadmill motors and treadmill power supplies and treadmill bits and pieces so that you can use them to power things other than a treadmill. And I realized with all the videos that I've made, I never made a video showing how I installed all this stuff onto my lathe. So that's what this video is. I'm just going to give you a quick rundown of how everything went together to put a treadmill motor on my Harbor Freight metal lathe. Greetings fellow DIYer and welcome to my video. So this is the treadmill motor that I'm using and this was actually the easiest part of the install. Back there we have the original mounting plate that the AC motor mounted to and I was able to drill some new holes in that and that allowed me to mount this directly to that plate. What's important to note on this motor is a couple of things. One, it has an external cooling fan, so a separate fan. It's not part of the flywheel. And then all the specs that we have here on this tag. Now, sadly, the way the motor is oriented, those are upside down. If only there was some way through the magic of film that we could flip them over. This is a really nice motor. It is three horsepower at 4,000 max RPMs. It goes clockwise in rotation. It's powered uh, 90 volts DC. And to get full torque, we need to be running 25 amps. Then on this side, I've got it butted right up against the belt cover. That's not a problem as long as the hole inside is big enough to allow air to move. If that was not the case and air couldn't easily flow, then you would want to have a gap here for air to be able to enter this motor or exit this motor depending on which way it is spinning. So this is the AC motor that I'm replacing and I want to go over a couple of specs because it directly pertains to the DC treadmill motor conversion. First of all, this says single phase to value which means this is not a candidate for using a VFD. If you know anything about upgrading lathes and mills, the VFD is the Cadillac of variable speed, but it is extremely expensive. So if this motor was capable of doing VFD, then that might've been a good way to go, but because it was not, it needs to be replaced. The second thing you need to notice is that it's 1700 RPMs. Now it's gonna be at that, roughly that speed all the time. You're gonna be putting 120 volts in and that's the speed. So nowhere on here does it give a horsepower rating. Thankfully, I have the manual for this machine and the manual says that the horsepower is three quarter horse. If you remember when we looked at the treadmill motor that I installed, the horsepower rating was three horsepower. So at this point, you're probably thinking, wow, that treadmill motor is four times the machine. Horsepower numbers are important because they are the motor's ability to do work, but horsepower numbers do not tell the whole picture. I have an entire video specifically on this topic. In order to get the correct one-to-one -one apples to apples comparison, we need to look at torque. Horsepower is calculated by taking torque times RPM and dividing by 5252. Horsepower is a calculated number, not a measured number. The only numbers we can measure are torque and RPM. So, if we have the RPM numbers and we have the horsepower numbers, we can work backwards. Horsepower times 5252 divided by RPMs gives us our torque value. So why are these calculations important? Why am I telling you about math other than to potentially bore you? Again, we want to compare apples to apples. If we look at it without doing these calculations, this is a three quarter horse and that is a three horse. So four times, it should be four times the motor. But when you actually do the math, you take the three quarter horse times 5252 and divide by 1700, you get 
right around 2.3 foot-pounds of torque. On the flip side, for the treadmill motor, if we take 3 horsepower times 5252 and divide by 4,000, we get 4 foot-pounds. So the treadmill motor is just a little below double the motor that this is. That is why it's so important to do the calculations, because if you go on horsepower alone, you would be looking at four times the motor, but that really is not the case. It is only twice the motor. For a much better comparison of why these numbers are so important, let's take a look at this smaller treadmill motor right here. As you can see, it says 2.5 horsepower. Of course, a little further down, it says 1.5 continuous, but for the sake of argument, we're gonna take the bigger number. It says 6,700 RPMs. So let's do the math. 2.5 horsepower times 5252 divided by 6,700 equals 1.9. And keep in mind that our AC motor had 2.3 foot-pounds of torque. So that means if I go with this smaller treadmill motor, I am not upgrading my lathe, but I am downgrading it. Obviously, the variable speed is an upgrade, but functionality is going to decrease. So that is why these numbers are so important. In the case of my lathe, I put a better motor on all the way around. Better because of speed adjustment, better because of torque and horsepower, but not all treadmill motors are created equally. Compare what you have to what you're putting on and it may not be worth it if it's a smaller, underpowered treadmill motor. So this is the conical pulley that came on my AC motor. It's got three different sizes, small, medium, and large, and that was originally how speed was adjusted on this lathe. The reality of it is, and I've said this in some of my other videos, I sometimes can be a little bit lazy, and basically what I ended up doing was I put it on the smallest one, I put it on the largest drive pulley on the spindle, which brought me in at 500 RPMs. And basically I ran the lay that one size fits none. Not the correct way to do it. In fact, it's not even a good way to do it sometimes within a single operation. If you are cutting something, turning something down, as the diameter shrinks, so does your need to increase speed. That's a huge part of why this pulley system is a bad idea for a lathe and why a variable speed where you can adjust it with the turn of a knob if things start to chatter is a far superior way to go and results in far better cuts. So right now I'm showing you the end of the pulley and the reason for that is this pulley, the ID that fit over the shaft was actually larger than the OD of my treadmill motor shaft. The solution was pretty simple. I created a sleeve, you can see it there, it's a bronze bushing, that goes around this to take up the extra diameter. And then I just had to machine a extra tall key and cut a groove in said bushing. This is a technique that I go over in one of my frequently asked question videos on mounting up uh, pulleys. This is my power supply box for my treadmill conversion. You can see down below we have the uh, choke, and I want to make something clear. When it comes to chokes, typically the bigger the better, and this was the biggest one that I had. It's almost the size of a softball, and so that's why I used it on this lathe, because this lathe is going to see the most use of any of my shop tools that are running a treadmill motor, and I wanted it to have the best protection. Okay. So let's take a peek behind the curtain and see what we have going on in here. Looks fairly complicated, but it's really not. You have the SCR voltage controller there in the back. Lots of videos showing exactly how those are wired up. I've got the bridge rectifier right here. So that's what's converting the AC that's coming out of the SCR voltage controller into the DC current that the treadmill motor needs. Then between the SCR voltage controller and the bridge rectifier, I have a circuit breaker. And the reason for that is if a bridge rectifier fails, it oftentimes completely shorts out, which would create a direct short across the outputs of your SCR voltage controller and burn it out. So the other important thing on the SCR voltage controller is it's the main component that 
determines how fast the motor is going. It's the part that limits voltage to adjust speed. And the way the SCR does that is with a potentiometer, also known as a variable resistor. So the wires right here, this is the two leads that are coming out of the SCR that the potentiometer attaches to. And I've run those up to the control panel for my lathe. So these are my controls right here. I have two potentiometers. I have a large one and a small one and they act as fine speed control and coarse speed control. I have a master power switch. This is on the AC side of things. It cuts power or turns power on to the SCR voltage controller. And then this right here is my direction switch. Now this is a double pole, double throw switch. And what it does is it takes the DC current coming out of the bridge rectifier and it goes through this switch on the way to the motor. And when I flip the switch, it reverses the polarity going into the motor. So what would normally be set up as red to red and black to black becomes red to black and black to red. And that's what gives me reverse motion. Now what's super important about this switch is that it is center off. If you had one that was on on without a center off, you run the risk of damaging your motor because if you have it going one direction and then you suddenly flip it the other direction, it'll make all kinds of noise, super hard on the brushes and the plate that the brushes ride on. All right, so let's take a peek at this and see how all this works. I'm gonna adjust this camera ever so slightly so you can see the spindle. And let's give it a go. So right now I have it turned all the way down and it's coming on We're right around 50 RPMs. That's my minimum RPM. And fine speed control. You can see I've turned that knob quite a bit and it's not speeding up that much. So that's max speed on my fine control. Turn that back down. And then we have coarse speed control. And you can see just a little bit of movement makes a huge change there. Now I can do those in concert. So. Let's say that's fast, but I want it a little faster. I turn the fine up to get it exactly where I want it. Now, let's say I'm threading and I need to stop everything and go the other direction. I can flick my direction switch to the off position, wait for it to come to a stop, and then flip it the other direction and it will run in reverse. And again, I have the ability to adjust speeds as I'm cutting. So if you're going to have a variable speed motor, you really should have an RPM meter. And that's exactly what I have right there. That is the slowest setting that I have with this machine, right around 50 RPMs. Now if I hit the fine adjustment, I can take it up to almost 300 RPMs, so that's an entire turn of the fine adjustment. And then with the course adjustment, we can take it up to full speed. And we come in at about 1550. So that's the advantage of having the course speed adjustment and the fine speed adjustment. The fine speed adjustment, like I said, is about 250, a little less than 250 RPMs. So one small turn of the knob gets me somewhere between zero and 250. But the course adjustment is almost 1200 RPMs. So that same small adjustment that I did on the fine may get me several hundred RPMs. And that's why I'm a huge proponent of using both a course and fine. Setting it up this way, I can dial it in to within a couple of RPMs of exactly where I want it to be. So I hope that information helps you be able to install a treadmill motor on your lathe or other shop tools. Now, there's a lot of things I haven't talked about, like where to get a treadmill motor or 
where to get the SCR, how to wire all that up. I have lots of other videos that go over those exact topics. So this was just to show you how I did mine. This is hands down the best upgrade I have made to this machine. And I've made a lot of upgrades to it. I even put uh, an ELS or electronic lead screw so I would be able to convert a machine that doesn't thread into a machine that threads. And the treadmill motor upgrade is the single best upgrade I have done to this machine. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to post them below and I will at the very least answer them. And maybe, just maybe, I might make a video about your questions. So please participate, let me know what you think, let me know what you would like to see more of and I will do my best to make it happen. If you like what you've seen, please click like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.